Let's learn all about these midpoint Riemann sums. We're going to be looking at the area under the curve x squared between 2 and 10 with four of these midpoint rectangles. Now I'm going to show you three different ways to do this. We're going to go ahead and just calculate the areas and add them up. We're going to use the Riemann sum formula, and then I'm going to show you how to plug it into your calculator. Let's go ahead and start by finding those areas. Now as I'm looking at these midpoints, I am measuring the height of each each of those rectangles with the middlemost value. So our sample point x sub i star in this case falls in the middle of each of those intervals and we're going to use that to measure the height. Because we've got four of these, we've got x sub 1 that's equal to 3, x sub 2 is equal to 5, x sub 3 is equal to 7, and this x sub i star here is actually an x sub 4 star that's equal to 9. So as I calculate each of these, my area for each of these is going to be my height times my width, which is going to be that function value at our sample point. In this case, that's 3, 5, 7, and 9 times the width, and we're going to call that width delta x. So to compute delta x, that width, we're going to go ahead and take the entire length of our interval. 10 minus 2 gives us a length of 8 and divide it by our four rectangles and we get a width or a delta x of 2. So I want to add up all of these areas and I've got four of them. So I goes from 1 to 4. This is our summation notation, but what I'm really doing is just adding up each of these. So it's going to be my first midpoint, which is at 3. So it's going to be f of 3 times 2 plus my next midpoint, f of 5 times 2, and then f of 7 times 2, and then finally f of 9 times 2 times 2. So moving this up out of the way, um, as I work each of these, I'm just squaring. So this is going to be 3 squared, 5 squared, 7 squared, and 9 squared. I've got that common 2 that I can go ahead and pull out in front just to make my life a little bit easier. So I've got 2 times each of these heights. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25, 7 squared is 49, and 9 squared is 81. So as I do the math and multiply by that 2, I end up with an area of those rectangles of 328. Okay, that was method number one. But what if you had much more than four rectangles? This would end up to be a ton of work. So instead, we're going to put this into the Riemann sum. And I was actually close when I was using this notation here. So I had i goes from 1 to 4 of a sub i. If I rework that summation, 1 to 4, remember a sub i, those were my areas. So that was going to be my height times my width. But I can replace that height with f of so that height, f of x sub i star, and I'm going to run out of room before I replace that width. I want to replace that width with our delta x. This gets us to our midpoint formula. n sub n is just the midpoint Riemann sum for n rectangles. n is the number of rectangles. I is our index, it's going to count our rectangles up to 4 in this case. x sub i star, that's our sample point, and in this case it's the midpoint of each of those intervals, and delta x, this one stays consistent, and it's our rectangle width. Let's customize our formula for our example. So for starters, the total number of rectangles is equal to 4, so I can replace that with a 4. I goes from 1 to 4, so that works. My delta x, let's do that one next. So delta x is equal to the interval width. Well, in general, if I had an interval from a to b, I would do b minus a divided by the number of rectangles. But our interval happens to be from 2 to 10, so we're going to go ahead and do that 10 minus 2 divided by 4, and we get that delta x of 2. Next, we need that x sub i star. x sub i star is going to get us to our midpoint. So as I'm looking at my interval from 2 to 10, so I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, I really want to pick up each of those middle values. But let me label these 2, 4, 6, 8, 
and 10. My sample point is going to be the midpoint though, so that's going to be 3, 5, 7, and 9. In order to travel to each of these, we're going to have to incorporate half of our distance. I'm actually going to use not the um, first one, but I'm going to use the second one. So if I start at 2, in order to get to this 5, I can go ahead and add two delta x's. So I can add two of my delta x's. So that would be one, two, but I need to back up half of one minus half of a delta x. So in order to compute these, I'm going to start where my interval begins, which is a. I'm going to go ahead and add i delta x's. That gets me to the right-hand endpoint, so i delta x's, and then I need to back up half of a delta x to get to my midpoint, so one half of delta x. That's going to give us our formula. So our formula is going to be a plus, in parentheses, I'm going to put that i minus one half, so plus i minus one half, and then our delta x. So for our example, a is equal to 2, and I've got i minus 1 half times our delta x, which is equal to 2. Now because I've got this, I can go ahead and simplify now that I've got it in terms of my problem. If I distribute that 2 through, I get 2 plus 2i minus 1 half times 2, but 1 half times 2 is just 1, and I've got my 2 minus 1. That gives me our x sub i star, and that's going to be 2 minus 1 plus 2i. Let's write that as 2i plus 1. Okay, finally back at our formula, we need to figure out what f of x sub i is. We are almost there, I promise. F of x sub i star. That's going to be our x sub i star squared. So I'm going to put in 2i plus 1. And to square that, we're going to go ahead and use our binomial expansion. a plus b squared is equal to the first one squared plus 2 times both of them plus the last one squared. Okay, so as I expand this, I end up with 2i squared, that's going to be 4i squared, plus 2 times 2i times 1, it's going to be plus 4i, plus the last one squared, which is going to be 1. Putting all of this into our formula now, m sub 4 is equal to the sum as i runs from 1 to 4. I'm going to put in our f of x sub i here, star. So f of x sub i is equal to 4i squared plus 4i plus 1. And then I'm going to multiply by, so times our delta x, and delta x is equal to 2. Now my goal here is to simplify so that I can get this in terms of my summation formulas for i, for i squared, and for a constant. So let's go ahead and keep on simplifying. As I simplify this, let me move this up, we've got still that sum. i goes from 1 to 4. 4i four times 2, that's going to be an 8i squared. 4i times 2 is 8i and then times 2 is equal to 2. Now what I want to do though is to add these up in groups. So I'm going to add up the i squares, I'm going to add up the i's, and I'm going to add up those 2's. So it really looks like distributing that summation formula. So I've got the sum of my 8i squared plus the sum of my 8i's plus the sum of my 2's. I'm going to pull out anything. I'm going to factor that out in front that doesn't depend on i. So the 8's going to factor out in front of both of those. I'm going to go ahead and factor out this 2. You don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and leave a times 1 there on the end. So doing that isolates each of my summations. So this is going to be i goes from 1 to 4 now of i squared. Factoring out the next 8. Let's put the index back in, 1 to 4 of i, plus, I am going to factor that 2 out, you can leave it, i goes from 1 to 4 of 1. Now I've got to put in each of my summation formulas. So I've got a summation formula isolated here, 
here and I'm using one for my constant here. So this gives me, I'm going to write littler, 8 times. This is going to be n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. But if you're ahead of me, you'll notice that our n is actually equal to 4. So I want to go through and replace each of these n's with a 4. So I've got a 4 here, a 4 plus 1, and a 2 times 4 plus 1. So my green box is the summation formula. So I've completed that summation. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Plus 8 times the summation of i is going to be n, n plus 1, all divided by 2, but our n is equal to a 4. So I can go ahead and replace those with our 4. So 8 times 4, and then 4 plus 1 in the parentheses. That's our second summation. Done. And then this last summation is much easier. I've got the 2 on the outside, and I'm going to add up 1 4 times, which happens to be 4. So I get 2 times 4. Okay, moving this up, I can cancel some 2s here, and I get a 3 and a 4. It's going to give me 4 times 4, which is 16 times 5, times 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9, all divided by 3, but our 3s cancel. In the next box, um, my 2 cancels, and I get a 4 there. 4 times 4 is 16, so I get 16 times 5, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. I can go ahead and add these up on my calculator. And phew, I get the same answer of 328. But I promised you one more method. The last method is going to be to do the summation on the calculator. However, you do need to set up the Riemann sum. So I'm going to scroll back through my work and I'm going to find our Riemann sum. The Riemann sum is right here. This is what I want to put into my calculator, but I want to replace all of the i's with a k so it doesn't get messed up with my imaginary unit. So I'm going to go through and erase each of these, and let's replace each of those with a k instead. You can definitely leave it with an i, or you can choose your favorite letter. So first of all, you see that I've got my other computations there. Let's see what the summation gives us. So I want to go into my math menu. So I'm going to choose math, and then I'm looking for the summation. I'm going to arrow down. I think it's zero, which it is. There it is. And then I hit enter. It's first asking me for my index. I changed that to a K. So I'm going to go to my alpha button and then K is on the parenthesis and K is going to run from one. I'm going to arrow over and change that to a four. Inside the parenthesis is going to go that Riemann sum that I set up. So I've got 8 and then my k. So second k, I'm going to grab my squared button and then plus 8k. So alpha parenthesis and then plus a 2. I cross my fingers and hit enter and I get that same 328. You guys are doing so good. Take a look at this next video. You've got this.